Welcome back to the sideboard for our last sideboard of the weekend. Uh, the Denver Open Series is over. We have our champion, Joe yeah. Lawson. Congratulations, man. Thank you. It's been a long time coming. Here's your uh, it has. Legacy Open trophy. For those of you not in the know, Joe finals the 2011 Denver Legacy Open playing Cephalid Breakfast. I did, yeah. Uh, since then, you've been playing Counterbounce a fair bit this year, actually. I, I think this is at least the third tournament, right? Yeah, the last few months I've been, I picked it mm -hmm. up and I've been changing cards in and out, but yeah, same structure. For, for like a while it? now, it's it's been it's been really good. Uh, the first few times I played it, I was really happy with it, and then last week we went to a local tournament, and I went three and four, <laughs> and my confidence was completely destroyed. And uh, you know, this is the deck I know how to play right now. I'm going to bring it anyway, sure. and uh, worked out. I mean, obviously. yeah, paid off pretty reasonably. Yeah, you found yourself with a really favorable matchup in the final. I obviously. did. Yeah, Char Belcher is yeah. like the dream for your deck. Right? Not, not only is it a good matchup, um, about a month ago, um, kind of for fun. Um, me and another Jason, um, we kind of worked up an analysis for Charbelcher and Excel, and really analyzed how the deck was built. Um, just because I mean, it's so uninteractive, you can really look at the numbers more than you don't have to worry about interactions. And so I really have a good feel for the deck, even though I don't play it myself. So that uh, that felt good. You like, mentioned Jason, and I think it's really funny. You guys travel together, play together a lot, and yeah. for Denver, for the second time in a row, you guys yeah. both top aided, and you top aided the same formats. Yeah, yeah. He top aided standard, you top aided mm -hmm. legacy, yeah. where. Jason got a four, uh, top four this weekend, but he got second yeah. at the last Denver. So yeah. Very peculiar. Yeah. Last year, we, uh, <laughs> we came out here, we both got second. And so this year, like, is, there, is it realistic that we can beat that? And like, well, you know, probably not. But top four and winning, is that better than two finals? I'm going to I'm going to say it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think definitely the, so, the trophy uh, and the four. I mean. But uh, yeah, this, uh, this city is treated as well so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So. You played the deck all day, obviously. Mm -hmm. You got to draw in the last round, but other than that, you had to play it and you took a round one loss. I did. I lost in the first round to the guy I beat in the top eight. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, when the, when, the pairings, when the final standings went up and I saw who I was playing against, uh, that was not the opponent what I picked. But, uh, but it worked out. But it worked vengeance. out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, I took care of it. And, yeah, I mean. That was against Richard Chambers. What was he playing? He was playing Esper Stoneforge. Esper Stoneforge? Okay. I felt like I wasn't at a big disadvantage. No. Um, but, uh, but since he did get me earlier, you know. Yeah. Was, I mean, you're two, like, pretty grindy fair decks, and yeah. it's just going to go long, like, yeah. every time, right? Yeah. Yeah. The first one, in the, when we played in the Swiss, it definitely went long. In the, uh, the top eight, the games were, well, they weren't short, but they were shorter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, your semifinals match was really interesting to watch. It was against Michael Sfien playing yeah. the new Omnitel list, not like the Overmaster one that did so well uh, online, but uh, a new one from Japan with Academy Rectors and Therapies. Were you aware of that particular list? <sighs> yeah, going into the yeah we, we, we saw the list a couple days ago. And for uh, yeah, all the, all the people that play locally in LA, I know I argued that Omniscience was completely unplayable and <laughs> not the best show and tell deck. And clearly I'm wrong, but uh, yeah. yeah that it list was, has some I, scary weapons. It does, but... Um, I've been playing long enough, like Academy Rector, like I'm familiar with the card, and uh, I knew that uh, going in and that uh, the graveyard removal was effective against it. Yep. So like the surgicals are, are, you know, they're basically counter the whole thing, and uh, so uh, so that was it was good to know sure. that because if if I hadn't, you know, if that hadn't already come up like you know years ago, I might not have boarded those in, and right. they were crucial in me winning the second game. Definitely. In fact, you wound up uh, topping during a counter bounce when a rector was resolving and you hit the surgical and you w you sat there for a really long time before it resolved were you showboating no, a little no, no, to try no, and no, get see, him? I had to, no, I knew that the surgical was on top of the deck yep. and um, you know, the, the part where I paused for a long time, I well, maybe I paused at that point, but I mm -hmm. felt like when I paused was when I actually cast the, I don't remember if it was a portent or a ponder, I mean, or a brainstorm at this point, I think it was a portent, but um, I had, because I could have just straight countered the, um, the rector. Sure. Um, no, but, no, I remember that. Yeah. There was a moment where he was uh, concerned, the first rector, mm -hmm. uh, not the one he living wished for, but the first one where he was concerned you might have a Jace on top of your deck. Oh, uh, no, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, you're talking about, I was talking about the second game. You're talking about the yeah, third yeah, game, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Um, yeah, at this point, I don't even, I don't even remember <laughs> what I was thinking. It's all a blur. I knew there wasn't, yeah, there wasn't, I, yeah, clearly there wasn't a, uh, a Jace on top of the deck. Yeah, there was, that's just but that was, yeah, you're right. That was when there was a surgical and... Uh, did I have did I have a counter in my hand at that point? I don't even remember. Uh, no, I don't think I you think did. Was, but I think no. like it felt like you were trying to was, get him. I know what it was. Like I that. had I think uh, if I remember, I think there was a surgical and a force, sure. or some kind of or a counter spell, some kind of thing on the top. Okay. So I could have taken the counter, drawn it into my hand, and countered it, or I could have left the surgical there, waited for him to sacrifice it, and then get it. Mm -hmm. And um, decided to go. For I decided to go for the yeah. one that was was more crippling to the deck. Yep. Uh, 
And uh, yeah. as we saw in that game, he even managed to try and kill you again with the Living Wish. That's one of the things that's so scary about that deck. Like so yeah. many of its weapons are stored in the sideboard. Yeah. It can recover from a lot. And yeah. Cabal Therapy's incredible disruption yeah. in that deck too. Yeah, and Cabal Therapy's pretty good. And he definitely, yeah, he had a few of them, but. Uh, it worked out. Yeah, 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 it worked out. You played pretty tight. Like watching you play is always good. It's enjoyable. Thanks. You generally play pretty well. So congratulations, Joe, a well-deserved trophy. You. I'm going to throw it back to the booth. This is the last time you're going to see me for a couple weeks. Uh, Portland's my next show. You'll see Ruben Bresler doing the sideboard in Minneapolis. But Joey and Adrian are going to close you guys out for Denver. So here they are again.